Hello everyone, it's Ben here, and today we're looking at a task to IELTS essay. And I'm sure you'll agree, a pretty good one. So I'm going to read the essay briefly. It might be slightly better if you just um, pause the video and read it on your own and think about what score you think it might receive. So this is the first page, second, third paragraph and the fourth and last paragraph with the conclusion. These are the band descriptors. Um, you don't only have to look at this page because it's a very uh, good essay, certainly above six. Um, it might be a little small to read this if you're on your phone. When I talk about them, I'm going to zoom in. But if you want to think about what score you would give it, um, it might be easier to uh, to look at the band descriptors on your own um, by downloading them or printing them from the IELTS website. Because as I always remind you, these are available to everyone. It's the public version. Public is people. Uh, you are people, so you can access this anytime you want. And it's a very valuable resource if you want to know what kind of scores you might be looking at in the IELTS exam. I'll tell you the scores now that I would give. So again, you can pause it and try and score it on your own first if you want to um, see how close you came. But what I eventually came up with was 7.5. High 7.5 because I gave 8, 7, 8, and 8. And to, uh, to remind you, for each individual part to get 8 overall, it's, it's not rounded up. It would have to be uh, 8 in all of them. Or, for example, if one was 9 and one was 7, that would be 8 overall. Other parts of the IELTS exam are rounded up, but not individual writing tasks. Um, if you want to know more about that, you can find the information online, you know, which parts are rounded up and which ones are not rounded up. For me, I remember the student um, the student went on to get a very high score. I can't remember about writing in particular, um, but I think the student got a, a high score like eight overall. Um, writing was was over seven. I think this is even a rewritten one, so it is a, especially good for this student. For the uh, introduction, I think there's nothing that really needs changing, but it could be a bit longer, so... Increasing traffic and pollution problems are now two of the most concerning issues in metropolitan areas. However, raising the price of fuel will play an important role in preserving the environment. It addresses the question pretty well. Price of petrol. Petrol is what British people say. Americans say gas, which is gasoline. But it's fuel for vehicles. What kinds of vehicles? These ones, we say... Um, as a kind of shorthand, a short way of saying internal combustion engine vehicles, so the ones with vehicle emissions. And that's important. It's important in this essay because um, there are electric cars which don't have those kinds of emissions, and it's, it's not something um, that all students or candidates would, would think to mention. But this, this student does talk about electric vehicles. I'd say that problems don't increase, they get worse. Get worse is too informal, so I'll use the verb worsen or deteriorate. So worsening or deteriorating problems are now two of the most concerning issues in the metropolitan areas. Nice metropolitan. Raising the price of fuel, nice. Instead of increasing the price of petrol, nice rewarding. play an important role in something happening is a nice little um, 
phrase that you can steal and reuse in many ways, kind of repackage it. You know, teachers play a vital role in the development of children um, or to follow the, the same structure with ING. Uh, teachers play a, a vital role in mm, educating children about the environment, something like that. On the one hand, there are two quintessential, so absolute essential, nice benefits that will occur if the government or private sector increases the price of petrol. Nice understanding, yep, the government can uh, raise tax. The private sector, you know, the businesses where you actually buy the uh, the gas, both of those can raise the, the price, arguably depending on how it's it's regulated in a country. First and foremost, people who utilize vehicles, good language, so utilize, use, vehicles that rely on internal combustion. We talked about that. No need for that comma there. It kind of disrupts the flow. And um, maybe a little slip, but still, it's something that would affect the, uh, the score this will get. People who utilize vehicles that rely on internal combustion will inevitably lessen the usage of their vehicles and use public transport more instead. So the more expensive gasoline is, the less likely people will be to drive those uh, traditional types of vehicles that, um, that um, are associated with very high carbon emissions, a very high carbon footprint. This will enable the air to develop its quality higher than before. This is a rare part where um, the English is not actually too good. The air to return to its previously high quality. In other words, before we humans started wrecking the environment. I guess previously higher, at least, quality. Moreover, this trend will encourage residents to go to the destination, what destination? Their individual destinations, by bicycle or on foot. Good understanding of grammar. We usually say by, but uh, on foot is the exception. I guess because it's not a kind of uh, machine in the way that subway or train by train by subway by bicycle is... It's just on our feet, which are zero carbon modes of transport. Very nice. So no carbon emissions at all when you ride a, a bicycle, a push bike, or walk. Motorcycle, obviously different. And it will lead people to become healthier. It's, uh, it's not bad, but... Go to the des destinations on foot, which will use a relative clause to make it slightly uh, fancier, which will lead people, which will, let's say, in turn, lead people to become healthier. In turn is a useful phrase uh, when you have two consequences. So A leads to B, and B leads to C. Let me give you an example. So A is start going to the gym. B is look better. C is feel better about yourself because you look better. So regular exercise um, can make people... Uh, regular exercise can make people... Um, I'm going to choose my words carefully because... Uh, can lead to weight loss and improved fitness. I'm going to change it actually, not feel better, which in turn reduces the risk 
of various health problems such as diabetes and heart attacks. I'm kind of thinking out loud, so my apologies for changing it, but regular exercise, weight loss, and improved fitness, in turn, less chance of getting various nasty diseases. So A leads to B, B leads to C. So which will in turn lead people to become healthier? So A to B, this trend will encourage residents to go to their destinations by bike or on foot, and B to C, in turn, that will result in better health among the public. So better public health. I guess I shouldn't say better. I can choose a better word, improved public health or ameliorated public health. Anyway, let's continue. So a massive amount of carbon dioxide is the main factor that triggers global warming and climate change. Yeah, global warming and climate change, they're kind of the same thing. But we tend to use climate change these days. Uh, language changes over time. When I was young, we said global warming. Now we say climate change. The reason is quite funny in a way. People thought getting warmer sounded like a nice thing, so they wanted to make it sound more serious. And from England, it's often kind of a bit cold. People are like, oh, warmer weather, that sounds great, because obviously people don't understand it. So we talk more about climate change now. Raising fuel prices would be beneficial not only for the environment, but also for people's fitness in the long term. Yeah, it's explained quite clearly. Um, if people ride a bike or travel on foot, it's good for their health. So that's a nice way to wrap up the, the paragraph, absolutely. Not only, but also using a different structure for the grammar to kind of uh, show off the, the English that the student has. On the other hand, the problem could be minimized by a more efficacious solution. So getting to the second part of the question, what other me measures do you think might be effective? On the one hand, on the other hand works quite well here. On the one hand, the, the kind of suggested method, increasing the price of petrol, would be good in several ways. But on the other hand, there might be a better way. It works well, doesn't it? Not by, but via, via the introduction of, I guess, via. Very good word for writing. It's very flexible and nice and formal, which is just a beautiful combination for IELTS writing. You can use it in lots of different ways, and it's a very uh, fancy word. Via, like through means of, through the method of. So the problem could be minimized. Maybe there's a better word than minimized, like mitigated. But it's, uh, it's close enough. I'm not going to change it. The government and companies could encourage citizens to use electric cars by providing them at a cheap price. Yeah, could have more information. Various governments around the world have offered subsidies for people who buy electric uh, vehicles. It means they kind of uh, take some money off the price, basically. As vehicles that use petrol to generate energy emit a massive amount of carbon dioxide, replacing cars with electric cars would help to significantly reduce our carbon footprint. Nice language again. But uh, electric cars are cars, so you can't really say replace cars with electric cars. I'm going to say replacing them, like those cars, um, the ones specifically that use petrol to um to uh to generate momentum to move but still pretty good um providing them at a cheap price uh eh, i will use subsidize by subsidizing their cost would be a slightly improved um Alternative, I would suggest. Subsidize, well, it's going to be S if you're in the UK. I'm from the UK, but kind of I switch between the British and American because uh, one of my parents is from the UK. The other is actually from the US. My mom's from New York. And uh, back to the question. In conclusion, there are several environmental problems triggered by growing traffic and air pollution. Not really and, but... 
but fortunately, there are still, we've got to change the word order there, there are still some solutions stated above to tackle the issue. Well, we don't like to jump back and forth in an essay. You could say something like, as aforementioned or as stated above, but generally we skip it because if your essay flows really well, uh, you don't need to get people to jump back. Just it's been a continuous, smooth progression from the start right to the end. If you need to ask someone to jump back, it's not very smooth. You've probably disrupted the flow somehow. Uh, I wouldn't say some solutions. I mean, solution solves a problem. So until they work, there are always potential or possible solutions. So there are several available strategies, so there are some potential solutions to tackle the issue. Hence, certain actions should be taken to preserve the environment, not only for our generation, but also for the next generation. Only the next one, I think, for all for all subsequent generations. For all subsequent ones, all future generations. I'm being a bit picky, but as I said, it's a very good essay, so I'm just uh, I'm being more picky than I usually would. The next generation is also good. I just think I'll make it slightly better. Scores, as I said, I would give it probably a very high score. And what I went for, to remind you, 7.5 overall. Grammar 8, vocab 7, cohesion and coherence 8, task achievement 8. But why is the question you care about? So task response sufficiently addresses all parts of the task. Does it fully address all parts of the task? Well, arguably it does. Sorry, I should use the, uh, the highlighter for you guys. Does it address all parts of the task to get a nine? Arguably it does, it's very clear, but I think with the conclusion, generally you would restate your main ideas So don't just say certain actions, which is very uh, general. Talk about how a specifically subsidizing uh, the purchase of electric cars to make doing uh, to make um, doing so very attractive or more attractive to the public is a particularly good method, uh, at least in the in the writer's opinion. So you don't go into detail because you don't have time and it's tedious for the reader, but you briefly restate the main ideas if you can. And that was basically the only thing. And it's maybe the only reason I didn't give it nine because it was very, very good. Grammar, why did I give seven? Um, oh, sorry, this is coherence and cohesion. Um, it's quite similar in a way. Uses paragraphing sufficiently and appropriately. Now, I told you at the start, in a way, I'm being a bit mean. I think this could have been, um, this could have been an eight, but I gave it seven in the end because I felt that uh, the introduction and the conclusion were. A little bit short. Um, logically organizes information and ideas, clear progression. Absolutely, definitely. Uh, clear central topic within each paragraph. Yep, yeah, definitely. But does it use paragraphing sufficiently and appropriately? Um, I am being picky, I know, I'm being picky, but really, it didn't restate 
the main points in the conclusion. And maybe I'm not being generous enough because it's a very, very good essay. But I'd say high seven or low eight. I'll put it that way. I did give eight for vocabulary, wide range of vocabulary, fluent and flexible, precise meanings. Absolutely, yeah, zero carbon modes of transport. Occasional inaccuracies in word choice and collocation. Yeah, there were one or two things. Um, but it was very, very good. It just wasn't native-like, um, where very rare minor errors occur as slips. A slip is something a native speaker does, like me, when they're talking too quickly, like when I'm making this video, <laughs> I have slips, or when I'm uh, writing too quickly. I might make a little spelling mistake or something. And finally, grammar. Well, it, it wasn't native-like. It wasn't minor errors occurring only as slips. Um, but it was very close. It was very close. I think grammar was a high eight. Um, but as you saw, there were corrections, very occasional errors or inappropriacies. Again, I'm being a bit picky. I think it's, it, it, is, it is debatable. But either way, it's a very, very uh, good essay. It's a very, very high score. I don't think being picky is much of a problem because I've never really known any institutions to ask for a score higher than 7.5. There was one time, I remember one course, ideally wanted an 8, uh, but they had some flexibility. But um, 7.5 will usually get candidates whatever they want, whatever their target is, you know, to go to the university they want to go to or get a job at the company they want to work at. Uh, anyway, that's all from me. Uh, thank you for watching and listening as always. Bye-bye.